We're now ready to add a little interactivity to our website so that we and our users can have more control over the content. We also need to address that looping behavior that we've seen in our timelines in previous chapters. So in this chapter, we're going to be taking a look at how to construct a button symbol, and we'll also introduce action script and see how that integrates with the rest of our movies. If you're working with the file you used in your last chapter, you're all set up. But if you're starting fresh like me, you'll want to go to your project files on your desktop and open the Chapter 7 folder, and then open the Flash Site 7 start file I have here. And the first thing I'm going to do is save this out into our website folder. I'll choose File, Save As. We'll go right to the desktop, and we should find our Project Files folder there. I'll just go to the Flash website folder, and if you've already got a file in there, you may want to write over it, or just save it as Flash Site, and we'll have our flaw file all set up. I'll choose Yes for replacing my old one, and we're ready to start. We'll get things started by just talking a little bit about ActionScript and finding out where we're going to be working with it. Our primary tool for using ActionScript is, of course, going to be the ActionScript panel. And if you went through Chapter 1 with me, we set that into our workspace right over here with the rest of our panels. You can see my Actions panel right here. I can just click it and pop it up like the rest of the panels. Now, it's a little bit bigger, so if yours doesn't come out this big originally, you may want to just pull and resize the panel over here on the side so you have enough room to see what's going on. If you don't have that panel set up, you'll find it up here under the Windows menu with the rest of the panels, and you can click here to activate it. Once you have it up on the screen, you can add it to your list of panels if you'd like. Now, it's primarily composed of three different panes here. The most obvious part of the panel is this big white area, the blinking cursor at the top, and that's where we're going to be typing our action script. Now the left-hand side is actually divided into two windows. And once again, if you're not seeing everything, you can just resize these in order to be able to see the difference between them. The top one is a big reference area, and it's actually full of these little book icons. Each one of those you can open up and you have more books or more information as it goes down. And this is all information about how to use ActionScript, so you know there's a lot going on there. The bottom part is a selection area, and it basically shows you where you're currently selected, and the lower portion will show you where your ActionScript is. Now, since we don't have any ActionScript in our movie right now, we'll come back later and take a look at this and see what it looks like after we've put some in. Notice the top part of the reference panel says ActionScript 3, and that's because our movie is currently set to use ActionScript 3. If I pull down this top panel, we've actually got references for ActionScript 1 and 2, and in addition to that, we've also got references for ActionScript for use for mobile devices. 1, 1.1, 2, 2.1, and 3. So there's a lot of things going on with ActionScript. Now, I'm going to leave this at 3, and we don't really change anything except the reference panel here. In order to change the script that we're using for our movie, we'd have to go back over to our publish settings and edit the profile and change it there. One thing we should know about ActionScript 1, 2, and 3 is that there's a big difference when you make your choice about which one you're going to use. Not so much with 1 and 2, but definitely with 3. The big deal is that ActionScript 3 was introduced in the last version of Flash, in CS3, and in order for my user to see a movie with ActionScript 3 in it, they'll have to have the Flash 9 player. Now, it's not going to make a big difference in the start of this chapter, but when we get towards the end, I'm actually going to show you how to make our website using ActionScript 2 or ActionScript 3. And that way you can choose which version of ActionScript you're going to use, depending on which Flash player you're targeting. The other part of the panel that we definitely want to talk about is probably the most important part, and that's down here at the bottom of the panel. We've got a little tab here that's showing me what's currently selected. And if we were to type ActionScript right now, it's also telling me where that ActionScript would go. Right now, I have the Portfolio Content Layer Frame 1 selected. And you can see my Portfolio Content Layer is selected, and Frame 1 is where our keyframe is. Now, this is very important because as we place ActionScript in the program, we want to know exactly where it's going to go. If you put ActionScript in the wrong place, it's not going to do what you think it's going to do. Now, when I put ActionScript into a movie, I generally place it on its own layer and give it its own keyframe. And that way I'm not going to mix it up with any of the other elements in the program. 
It also makes it a lot easier to find things. So let's set that up first of all. I'm going to take our main timeline, go right up to the topmost layer, which is portfolio content, and I'm just going to add a layer. I generally name this layer AS, for starters, and I'll even capitalize it so I can see it clearly. And then I'll finish the name with wherever I currently am in the movie, which right now is the main timeline, scene one. So let's just call it AS Main. Now when I go back into ActionScript, since I have that selected, you can see that it's now indicating that I'm writing ActionScript for AS Main Frame 1. 